Now, when you read chapter five, you probably saw that a lot of what I covered in the last chapter is written there. And I didn't want to just stop right in midstream while I had this information up here on this board, but I wanted to kind of go through it while it was all there together. And so let me review to make sure that we're on the same page. And that's this, that Jesus intended that the church should be apostolic. That's why he created apostles first. And why then all the other four gifts in the fivefold ministry gifts kind of flowed out of that apostolic anointing and apostolic environment and apostolic perspective. Now, it may be important right now to talk about or to describe what an apostolic perspective is. An apostolic perspective is one that strategizes for the advancement of kingdom. An apostolic perspective is a big perspective. It's, it's the general that sees the big picture. Now, imagine an army that was sent out on the battlefield with no strategic plan, no strategic objectives. In other words, you, you, you give the people guns, you give them their, their, their gear, uh, and you put them on the battlefield, and you just say, go fight and kill the enemy. And so you have a thousand warriors running out in the field, all kind of doing their same thing. There's no strategic plan. There's no uh, strategic objective. Pastors are very good, like drill sergeants are, to produce a group of people who know how to use that weapon. That's what pastors obviously do. I'm a pastor, and, and, and I love pastors. I am a, all about the local church. In fact, when I, I do uh, the work that is uh, incumbent upon me as an apostle, I always do so with the local church at the center of my thinking. I think it's everything is to and through the local church. The local church is the center. It is, it is the hub of everything that we're trying to do. But when we describe the fivefold ministry in military terms, we might say that the sergeants, what's called in the American military, the non-commissioned officers, those who are in charge of platoons, those are like pastors. And they have a unit of men and women that they train with their weapons, they make sure their armor is on, they, they school them in how to take care of each other. And so they, they have this unit, this one block. And then there is another block over here and another block here and several blocks, dozens of blocks in this battlefield, let's say, that has a thousand warriors. So the pastors are needed to fully equip and train. What the apostle does, the apostle is a general. The apostle is someone that sees the big picture and understands how to strategically take what the sergeants have trained those individual soldiers with and use that in a bigger environment, a bigger perspective to advance the kingdom of God. That's why local churches benefit from being connected with apostolic leaders. Denominational churches are really an advantage in that way over many independent churches because denominations are in essence kind of apostolically structured. Most denominations have government and uh, most denominations have people that, that they put in places that uh, their job description is to think apostolically. Now they may be called superintendents or bishops or whatever, but really what they are in the true biblical sense of the word is an apostle. And so they are valuable to the local church and to the local pastors because as the local pastors train their people, then they're able to connect their people with a bigger environment, a bigger army, and play a major role in advancing all of the troops forward. Now, denominational churches do that, and, and I was part of a denomination, so I know. We would have our district assemblies and, and our general assemblies, and those things are good. Those, those things are very needed. However, many people then have chosen to attend and to start independent churches. And I believe independent churches are of God. I, the independent church movement in the 20th century was an incredible move of God. So many independent churches doing wonderful things all over the world. However, God never intended that local churches in the ecclesia to be independent. Rather, God instructed and showed us from the word that they are to be interdependent. And that interdependency is linked by the fellowship and by the ministry of apostles. That's how it was in the early church, and that's the same way it is today. And so as we see the church today and we start to understand the, the different roles in the fivefold ministry, we see the benefits of pastor. I am one that loves pastors. I think that pastors, when you look at the military 
And you hear soldiers and officers talk about sergeants, those, again, the NCOs, the non-commissioned officers. They'll really tell you those are the backbone of the military. Those sergeants that train their men and then lead them in the heat of battle, boots on the ground where the bullets are flying, while the officers may be back off of the front lines, those sergeants are right there in real time seeing what the enemy's doing, seeing the changing landscape of the battlefield. That really is what a pastor is. I love pastors. As I said, I am one, and we need pastors. But we also, and I strongly encourage every pastor to, to be linked to an apostle, be linked to a, 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 a bigger picture, a general, if you will. Otherwise, what happens is pastoral churches, as I said in the last video, they just kind of over time produce an inbred, well-fed, isolated group of people that just kind of draw the circle around themselves. And they might have a great worship band and children's ministry, but it's our little world here. And unfortunately, a lot of pastors have even bought into that and they fly their own flag and they're a kingdom unto themselves. Even in their city, they don't participate with any of the other body of Christ because it's just us four and no more, as the old saying goes. And so that's a tragedy. So I encourage anyone that is leading a church from a pastoral position to be connected to an apostle. And that will make you, now listen, that will make you apostolic. Why? Number one, because of that attachment. But number two, if you attach yourself to truly apostolically gifted people, and as I said, they may consider themselves or call themselves a bishop. It doesn't matter. When you get connected to those types of people, you get in that environment, they will speak into your life. They will give you things that you didn't even know that you needed. And I know that for myself. I think we would be a fool, don't you? If we felt like we have it all and we don't need anybody else. We, if you're a pastor, we can't have that kind of attitude. Don't, don't, don't have that. There are things that other people can breathe into you. And so get connected to an apostle. Let the apostles speak into your life. Let the prophets speak into your life. Let those evangelists challenge you and speak into your life. Because as a pastor, you're one of five, but it takes all five to equip your people for ministry in the big picture. And I really believe that the more the fivefold ministry equips the saints, the better off the saints are. And the better off the saints are, the better off the church is. And so we've got a great army. We've got an army that can do incredible things. We've got an army the enemy is terrified of, but we have an incomplete army because we have not allowed apostles and prophets, and sometimes maybe even evangelists, function as God wants them to. However, one of the reasons you're watching these videos, I believe, is because you, 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 you're interested. You're curious. Let that curiosity lead you. Let the Holy Spirit use that to help you understand what it means to be apostolic understand what it means to be connected to an apostle. And so we have a pastoral church today, but I believe we are becoming apostolic.